Welcome to the fifth episode of Telecom TV's new monthly programme, The Open RAN Show, which each month takes a focused look at a particular part of the open RAN sector as we talk to some of the main people driving the development and deployment of disaggregated multi-vendor radio access networks. I'm Ray Lemaitre, Editorial Director at Telecom TV, and I'm your host for this programme which this month takes a look at one of the most challenging areas for the open RAN ecosystem, systems integration. Now, the role of systems integrators or SIs and the appropriate model for engagement has long been a major topic of discussion in open RAN circles, but there are still many views about how the relationships between network operators, systems integrators and vendors are best approached and the role that network blueprints and pre-integrated packages of technologies might play in the planning and construction of multi-vendor network architectures. And it's a tricky issue. Operators want their open RAN deployments to be cost effective and as simple as possible, but that's a challenge if you're dealing with multi-vendor systems, especially those that may not have been deployed previously in live production mobile networks. So how big a challenge is this? Well, I talked with Robert Curran, consulting analyst at Appledore Research, which has been tracking and reporting on open RAN developments for years already, to ask him if systems integration is the single biggest challenge right now for network operators looking to deploy open RAN based systems. Is it the biggest challenge? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is setting and managing expectations uh, in, in broad terms, um, but certainly in terms of uh, you know, making open RAN happen. Uh, you know, reintegration of disaggregated components is the is the least familiar area from an operator perspective. So, so yeah, it does it does really form, you know, that biggest unknown, if you like, compared to where people are today. Um, operators really have to decide as part of their planning, you know, which direction they're going to go in. Are they going to, uh, you know, DIY their own systems integration? Are they going to give that to uh, you know a specialist systems integrator, um, or are they going to provide you know, give that work to uh, you know, to an open RAN specialist. So there's quite a there's, there's quite a few options there. So I think that's an extra part in the whole planning and decision making process. So getting into that area, uh, you know, introduces them to to you know, new things, new parts in the process, uh, and new activities, which I know we'll, we'll talk about in a minute as well. So so yeah, it's it's certainly the biggest. Uh, I think the biggest uh, kind of technical concern, precisely because it's the least familiar. Well, it's still a major challenge, clearly. So how are operators approaching this? Well, I caught up with Paco Pignatelli, head of Open RAN at Vodafone Group, which is already deploying open multi-vendor RAN systems in its production networks, and asked him how Vodafone has been approaching Open RAN integration. We have been uh, working uh, on our learning process uh, from the beginning, and, and it all started with the um, uh, idea that uh, Vodafone will take uh, most of the system integration ourselves. But to be honest, uh, in the initial phase of the deployment, we, we've we been rely, uh, reliant on uh, our current uh, set of suppliers in, in the UK, primarily helped by uh, Samsung. Um, during this time, we've been learning on how to take the process ourselves. Uh, we've been uh, defining uh, the different procedures, we've been uh, uh, hiring people, uh, we've been uh, also scouting the market and, and understanding um, uh, you know, the different approaches and, and making our, our own trial and error um, uh, to, to find the, the, best, the best way. Uh, our idea is uh, to go into our next phase because before we uh, get into a mass scale deployment, so after summer most likely, uh, we will be uh, uh, launching a process to get uh, some support uh, for us in order to uh, be able to scale on, on all the uh, uh, different activities. But for the most part, it's a Vodafone-led um, responsibility. We are uh, taking care of uh, the product integration, uh, the product deployment, and, and then the, uh, the operation as well, where you, in all cases, you need a, uh, certainly need a, a company playing, playing that role. Someone needs to uh, play the coordination uh, role that has been performed by uh, traditional suppliers to, in the past. We're doing it primarily uh, uh, thanks to network of collaboration. If you take, for example, the product integration phase, 
it's not that our labs are replicating what a traditional supplier uh, had in the past. We we are working together with our suppliers and uh, uh, we are uh, managing uh, the release delivery as if it was a very big uh, project or program uh, that again Vodafone retains uh, accountability of. And um, but but it's a network. It's a, it's a, it's all, everybody benefiting from 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 everybody else. Uh, and now that we are in the f latest phase uh, before implementing our our blueprint, uh, we we are also supporting uh, other companies on uh, their own in, uh, system integration or product integration journey. So we are offering um, services, if you wish, to, to those companies and, and uh, it's coming together. Okay, interesting there from Vodafone, but uh, how can the broader industry help? Are pre-integrated configurations or blueprints that can be shared and replicated a good way of approaching open RAN systems integration? Let's hear from Paco at Vodafone again. One of the key points is uh, the role that some uh, industry body needs to play or an alliance uh, in the certification and, and the tip uh, in order to help uh, getting the right products to the market, ensuring that uh, we have the right interoperability uh, I think it's important that uh, um, we uh, uh, get to the right maturity uh, in in those coordinations because I was saying before we in Vodafone we are becoming like experts if you wish in our uh, own set of suppliers and the configurations. But uh, who works with other suppliers? Who who coordinates that uh, there is an end to end that uh, a small operator that has not uh, the chance to work on open run the way we do the big ones. Uh, uh, can take advantage of. So uh, I think uh, TIP uh, should should help us uh, get in there. And uh, well, obviously, there is another point, a broader point on the overall maturity. Uh, there will be a moment when um, inter interoperability, it's a given. Uh, and uh, you can you can have one radio with uh, the base, base band from another supplier, like if it was a uh, plug and plug and play like like an uh, like an USB, <laughs> for example. Uh, one of the uh, important points that blueprints can help is the, uh, and this is something we have learned while while uh, working on on system integration. Is uh, I mean there are some aspects of open run that today make it more uh, you know lengthy process to to do the integration. There are some. Uh, aspects of the uh, uh, specifications that are left open that are not mandatory then uh, you need to put together software from uh, the digital unit and the radio and uh, sometimes it's difficult uh, because uh, those uh, different uh, considerations whether certain uh, point is mandatory or not or or if i if it's implemented or not there are also requirements from the operators themselves that you know it may, make it a Make make it a, 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 a need the the the, um, um, the dialogue between the different parties. So we can we we can get more standardized in the approach. We can get more organized in the approach to communicate uh, between the different uh, actors and uh, and also to simplify. So if you have less less options, then it becomes a, it becomes easier. So in that way. Um, uh, if we have blueprints that clarify and support what needs to be uh, discussed and agreed, and uh, that is shared, that uh, it, it will all be uh, easier. Uh, obviously, other aspects like testing, uh, if you are able to have uh, a standardized testing and it's very clear what needs to be done in order to have a proper integration, then uh, it's, uh, it's also beneficial, I would say. And at a broader industry level, this is something that the Telecom Infra Project, or TIP, has been exploring as part of its open RAN efforts. So I spoke to TIP Executive Director Christian Toivo about how the industry body is aiming to help operators with their integration challenges. Uh, yeah, in fact, we see this as our key uh, mission if you like to to address in in the open run space that we are are, are focusing on inside tip uh, we did say in october last year at our fuse conference in madrid that we intend to build up an approach where we would look at how the incumbent vendors who have done this 
uh, throughout the years uh, integrating, testing and maintaining their own RAM solutions, how we could use that model, but translate that into a community driven approach that also includes the broader operator vendor community uh, and then come out with a proposal. And that's exactly what we have been working uh, with over the last uh, five, six months. And we are just in the process of uh, releasing a white paper that describes our take on this. Uh, and we are also working with a number of um, entities, meaning building up a kind of broad coalition, if you like, of uh, different players in the industry from operators the system integrators, the lab partners, and of course the uh, concerned vendors in order to build up a process where we believe TIP could through its community approach uh, drive this um, forward. So that's kind of our initiative, which we hopefully can launch even prior to our next FUSE conference, which takes place in October this year. So a certification effort there from TIP to help deliver some certainty and to help build out certain configurations that can be adopted. But can such blueprints cause issues? Might they in some way limit choices or stifle the innovation that Open RAN supporters hope will come from open multi-vendor deployments? Well, let's hear from Apple Door's Robert Curran again. I asked him if such preset configurations might impact best of breed opportunities. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. I think the reality is that's that's unlikely. Uh, let's put this in context. You know, the, the the idea of a kind of you know perfect plug and play um, is, I think, not only a slightly unrealistic expectation in the long run. It's also not really the necessary expectation. I think what the industry wants through Open RAN is is greater choice, not a kind of unlimited choice. So the practical the practicality is that as long as there are enough combinations. Uh, that work well together and that people know how to integrate and that's that's sufficient I, I think you know in any context once you introduce open into the environment uh, a sort of perfect uh, you know any combination is very very difficult to achieve doesn't mean we shouldn't aim for it and learn along the way um, but I think the idea that that blueprints will you know as a concept will will prevent us from as an industry uh, you know, getting benefits from open and getting the benefits of more combination, more choice, more flexibility. Uh, I don't think blueprints are going to constrain that process. Well, and certainly more choice has been the mantra from those operators pushing forward with open RAM plans. OK, at this point in the programme, we're going to take a look at the latest open RAM sector headlines brought to you as ever by Telecom TV's deputy editor, Yanitsa Boyetsieva. Yanitsa, over to you. Thanks, Ray. Open RAN vendor Mavenir has been making major headlines in recent weeks. At the beginning of May, it announced a new $100 million funding round that will be used to accelerate its R&D efforts. The financing round was anchored by the vendor's majority shareholder, Sirius Capital Group and supported by two highly strategic ecosystem partners that Mavenir did not identify, though CEO Pardeep Kohli told us in response to questions about the funding that Open Run brings in opportunity for a number of independent semiconductor companies. Telecom TV subsequently learned from industry sources that those two new investors are chip giants Intel and Qualcomm. Both companies have been working closely with Mavenir on its portfolio developments, and it seems clear they want to support Mavenir's efforts to become an open-run leader as the market grows in the coming years. And the Mavenir news doesn't stop there. The company has been linked to a large rural 5G open-run rollout with Bharat Airtel in India, and has also partnered with software company I2I Systems to drive the open-run sector in Turkey. The two companies will focus on implementation and development efforts in the country, where several operators, including Turk Telecom and Vodafone Turkey, have already been exploring the potential of Open Run. Moving away from Mavenir, UK mobile network optimization technology developer Accelercom raised £21.5 million in a new funding round to further its growth ambitions. The company claims it can enable operators, systems vendors and original equipment manufacturers to supercharge 5G. Accelercom is already working with networking chip giants such as AMD, Intel and Silicon and is one of the companies working closely with Vodafone on open-run R&D. 
And speaking of Vodafone, the operator claimed its customers are already benefiting from its commercial open-run rollout in the UK towns of Torquay and Exmouth. Vodafone claims this is the first commercial urban deployment of open-run in Europe and that customers have experienced improved internet speeds and greater access to 5G. The deployment, which the operator refers to as its golden cluster, comprises 14 sites and is just the beginning of a wider rollout of Open Run in the UK, with five more locations to be added in the near future. These are the hottest Open Run developments we've been following in the past few weeks. Back over to you, Ray. Thanks, Yanni, for those latest headlines. And now back to our show theme of Open RAN systems integration. Uh, what more can be done by the industry to help network operators overcome their integration challenges? Well, let's hear again from TIPS Executive Director Christian Toivo. Uh, yeah, there is a lot more to do, obviously, and I would particularly point out uh, the area of working with uh, the scenarios that involve how to deploy open RAN to so-called brownfield uh, environments, meaning environments where we have uh, existing deployed uh, non-open RAN solutions that are being uh, used for all the existing services and maybe even recently deployed to cover 5G launch and so forth. Uh, open RAN will be coexisting with uh, traditional RAN solutions for the next 10 years. And I think it's really important uh, we as an industry work on those scenarios, how practically Open RAN would be deployed in such environments. And that needs to be uh, included in our thinking on, on the deployment scenarios, in how we test the solutions, certainly the Open RAN, but also Open RAN in combination then with the existing, existing uh, RAN solutions. And this particular place uh, into how the whole operation and maintenance uh, should be set up in such a way that an end-to-end -end, uh, RAN uh, operational maintenance framework can be used to ensure that um, the network performs and in case there are uh, failures or problems they can be addressed uh, in a consistent way uh, and I think particularly uh, when we look from an open RAN perspective uh, the innovation side which includes RIC and XAPS RAPS that are still in the development um, I think it's important we define and also work out um, solutions on how that framework uh, will interwork with the existing OSS framework of uh, RAN through the SMO in such a way that important use cases which are applicable for the overall network regardless if it's open RAN or traditional RAN for example uh, functionality to uh, drive energy efficiency or, or or do capacity management how those uh, functionalities can be and deployed across the whole network in a consistent way often also supported by automation and using routines and processes that are consistent for the operators i think there's a lot of work to be done in that space that involves both product development uh, trials testing and probably also specification work and the final word on the topic to Vodafone's head of Open RAN, Paco Pignatelli. What is Vodafone's main message to the sector about Open RAN systems integration? Well, one, one point would be on overall cost. I, I, I think it's clear that uh, when, when you have to put together all the things that you have disaggregated before, there is a cost that you need to take into account. So. You could say, okay, that's going to be very complex. That's going to be a bigger cost than, than, than your savings. Um, what we can say from our experience is that uh, uh, it's true that it's a new activity, but the, the, the overall uh, total cost of ownerships remain uh, positive. And uh, we have plans to make it even uh, better in the future. So we are confident that uh, the system integration problem even though it's something that we also you know we need to improve and 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 we need to uh, we need to get to the right level of maturity is it's a uh, it's a problem that has a solution and uh, it will be off the table uh, uh, very soon i think the industry needs to work on that in the next 12 months 
but uh, we have a plan and we have uh, visibility that uh, it will be it will be shorter. So I will say that to uh, my colleagues, and I will also uh, call them uh, for action. If you want to do open run, if you want to um, get into the journey, uh, don't hesitate to approach the big operators, uh, the ones who are having already the experience. Uh, some of my uh, colleagues, uh, like for example, Docomo, they are. Uh, being very public about this and uh, the others as well. Uh, I think uh, it's all about uh, network of collaboration. It's about sharing and not repeating. And um, uh, but 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 the good news is that it's all happening. So we have a plan. So there we have it. Some key takeaways on the topic of open RAN systems integration. Something I know we'll continue to report on during the years to come. And that brings us to the end of this particular episode of the Open RAN Show. But before you know it, episode six will be upon us. So thanks for watching and until next time, adios amigos.